It's a cringe-worthy culture clash between today's couple. He continues to introduce her as his black girlfriend and can't seem to understand why she's so uncomfortable with this label. On top of this, he's a traveler. Although they're now the mom and dad of two children, I'm hoping to understand why she still wants to be his wife. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Monica Hugel and Joshua Weldon. The two of you have been together for six years, and you have two children together. Am I, am I right about that? Yes, ma'am. And you have some children by a previous relationship. Yes, ma'am. Um, Ms. Hugel, tell you know, me a little bit about how you two got together. To be perfectly honest, uh, we met on a dating app with the premise of what a dating app is, just yeah. a hookup. Um, so we didn't have any preconceived notions. Um, when, but when we first met each other, that spark was undeniable. Um, and so when, you know, then that's when we decided to, to maybe think extend about Extend the yeah, yeah, extend relationship it. a bit. Exactly. Um, and then once you do that, then you start going into Think, you know, your personality and different things, and that's where the differences came in. Yeah, what differences? Tell, t I mean, I see one. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> you're black and he's white, right. but, but list some others. <laughs> um, actually, the uh, even deeper than um, the, the main one that you see, the obvious one mm -hmm. that you see, is that was that strong in our situation because um, I'm from California. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from San Diego. Um, I'm used to diversity. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, being with somebody of a different race is not something that is a big deal yeah. for me. You know, it's, it's, it's whoever. Um, but by him being from where he's from, you know, the country, um, small towns, um, where in actuality, um, I really believe that, I, that I'm the only black person that he's really ever known in his life. <laughs> now, Mr. Welton, is she the only black person you ever known? Uh, pretty much. For real? That can happen. I mean, you know, I... you live in a small town, don't travel much, that can happen. And now, with that as backstory, <laughs> what were you thinking about on the dating apps? And, mm, I mean, you know, uh, I'm gonna see what it's like on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to see, experience something different, I guess. Uh huh. Um, uh huh. And, yeah. and you end up liking one another. Were you surprised? Definitely. And she was way different than I expected when I met her. Um, I mean, I've never really met too many black people. It was uh -huh. more uh, what I've seen on TV. Right. And I know you can't believe everything you see on TV, but it's kind of... But if that's all you know... Right. So I, I was expecting, you know, a little more a ghetto girl, I guess. And, uh -huh. and I didn't know how to explain it, but when we started talking, I was like... Whoa, you know, she used words I had to stop her for a minute. It's like, well, what does that mean? Right, right, I, right. Educated, intelligent. Yeah, and... And that, well, that wasn't in your list of qualifiers for black folk, typically. Well, I mean... And I ain't mad. I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's not how we are typically portrayed in the media. That's what I'll put it Right, that. right. Yeah. And so it caught me off guard. Ms. Hugel, you say after a while, though, when he got comfortable with you, some things started to, to pop up in this conversation. Can you tell me about those things? In actuality, uh, surprisingly enough, in 2000, when we got together in 2012, um, the, the N-word, which I didn't know was still used in regular conversation is, um, and it was a, there were one example. Um, we were watching it, we were watching a show <laughs> or a movie and we're sitting on the bed just watching a movie and he says, um, there was a situation where two uh, white guys uh, started chasing a black guy and he says, oh, they're about to get that in. <laughs> and I whip my head over to him and he literally did this. He stood straight. He could, I said, what did you just say? He goes, huh? He still didn't look at me. <laughs> what the, what did you just say? <laughs> right, I, I, I feel you, I feel you. You know, um, and then he said, oh, I said that, that that guy's gonna get him. I said, no, that's not really what you said. Um, and you did know Did you what? know after you said it that you, should, you shouldn't have? Yeah, as soon as it came out of my mouth, I went, oh, what yeah. did I just say? What have I just done? And, and I was trying to, like, I could feel the heat <laughs> when they're staring at me, I'm like, oh, uh, I don't know what to do now. <laughs> Honestly, though, Mr. Weldon, where you come from, do you use that term freely? I mean, it, it was used uh, pretty often because most of my family, I mean, they're kind of pre not really racist, but they're prejudiced of some sort. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. You know, and being growing up like that, it, it wasn't uh, any, any big thing using the N-word, you know, but 
I've learned over the years, it's like, it's pretty hurtful and, and degrading, and I didn't realize at the time. What did up, you expect when you were gonna hook up with a, a black woman? Uh, Did you have any idea? I was scared to death, to be honest. Uh, I was intimidated, and I was nervous as a I hadn't dated nobody in like 16 years, because my previous relationship, I was with the girl for 15 years, mm -hmm. and married for almost 10. So, Ms. Hugo, some other things came up during, your, during the course of, of your relationship. Uh, you say he frequently referred to you as my black girlfriend. Right. <laughs> Explain that to me. You know, I, I would tell my friend, oh, I met this guy. Um, or I'd tell my mom, oh, I met this guy. Um, he would say, um, he would tell his friend, oh, I met this black girl. Or, um, or I met this girl, she's black. You never stood alone. You, you were right. always designated as the black girl. Right, which made Not... me feel different. Right. You know, it, it, was always, it was always a distinction. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. It was right. always a distinction. Um, he always had to justify that I was black. Mm -hmm. Mr. Weldon, what do you have to say about that? Was that true? Uh, yes, Your Honor, but um, a lot of my friends are growing up in school and stuff were prejudiced. I mean, I hung out with skinheads mm -hmm. for my junior year, and then after I got away from that, because I realized it, it was stupid that I, I shouldn't hate somebody just because of the color of their skin, because I don't know anything about them. Right. Why should I hate, right. you know? And then I would, I kind of, I introduced her like that because I didn't want my friends to just be shocked all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I mean, I took her to meet one of my friends in Gorman. We came into the house and, and I kind of warned him that she was black and, and we came in the house and he got Confederate flags all over the walls. Right, right. Some stuff that was kind of, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, in his defense, I will say this. He's introducing you into an environment where you know, they're not around a lot of black people, and he was just up letting them know, this is you my girlfriend, and she's black, and they don't get crazy with it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. You know, just kind of right. give a heads up, because right. it was going to be jarring to that community. <laughs> right, not to yours, right. but, but to that community. Okay. Having said that, I'm going to say this. I understand that you are concerned that he's not really committed to this relationship because of past relationships. So I want you, ex want you to explain to me why you feel that way. He's just kind of a jerk to you. Yes, ma'am. White, black, or otherwise, okay. just uncommon. So, Ms. Hugo, what gives you concerns with respect to his commitment to this relationship? There was always an arm distance, an arm's length distance mm -hmm. kept between me and his family, mm -hmm. between me and his life. Granted, you know, uh, when I did meet him, he was coming out of a, um, a relationship, a marriage, and, um, you know, it, I actually was, was, okay, well, I'll be there as a friend for you. Um, and coming out of this marriage, um, it, it, it devastated him. Ms. Hugo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you. You're talking about a lot of things that, 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 are, that are perfectly true and interesting, but I wanna tell you what stuck out to me. He's just kind of a jerk to you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> White, black, or otherwise, right. just unkind. Absolutely. And I want you to g tell me some of the things that he's done, because the back of my hair is already up. Right. The um, back of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> the hair on the back of my head is already up. When I was pregnant, um, I needed a lot of help. Um, I'm, I was a, at, at a risk pregnancy, mm -hmm. I'm an older. You know, in, in the terms of being pregnant, I'm an older pregnant woman. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, um, what, did, what didn't he do? Um, he wouldn't come home sometimes. I, I needed. I, I had. I spent the first three months of my pregnancy in bed um, because I literally couldn't get up. And um, didn't you would... text him one day and say, "Look, I'm hungry. I can't get up. I can't get any food. I'm bedridden." And he just didn't do it. One day, <laughs> that happened very often. Um, anytime I was hungry, um, he was the only uh, person that could help me. And um, in many cases, it was me texting him saying, please come home, you know, or can you bring something to eat? And, um, you know, maybe two days later, you know, that's, that, to me, two days is, is a long time. And wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't he leave you alone with a sick baby while go out drinking with his friends? Yep. Um, um, my baby ended up having some um, health issues. Right. Um, and he, and he, he was boozing. Yeah, yeah. And when you were pregnant with the second baby, wasn't he talking to other women? That happened the whole relationship. 
Oh. Um, but I didn't find out. Uh, um, I didn't find out the seriousness of it until um, as time has gone on. So yes. Your son was so ill that you had to quit your job to care for him. And did he say to you, "So what? You just giving up now?" Yes. Well, uh, because yeah, because I had to quit my job. Of course, that's causing some financial mm -hmm. issues. Um, and so I looked at him. Hey, you got to help me with some of these bills. You know, I, I've, I've done everything I can. I've, I've gone through all of my resources. Um, so when I was kind of angry that he was like, well, why don't you go do this? Why don't you go do this? I'm like, now it's time for you to do, do this. Do something, right. Um, he actually said to me, well, what, are you just going to give up? I got you. I got you. <laughs> Weldon, that's a whole lot of incoming. <laughs> and I'm going to give you an opportunity to defend yourself. What's with all the disregard? I was a jerk at the time. I didn't, I didn't understand. I have a hard Well, have you unjerked yourself? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How did you get de-jerked? <laughs>
I, I have made a lot of mistakes, and some of them I probably can't make up for, and I know that she can't trust me because of them, but I love my kids, and I love her, and I want to take care of them, and I just want to do it, you know, what's right. All right, I'm going to give you my best last lessons, see what happens. What is the hardest difference to overcome in a relationship? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Let me tell you what happens to a woman when you treat her like she's nothing every other Tuesday. She starts to believe that she's nothing. On Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, knowing full well that next Tuesday's gonna come. You destabilize her, you will her away, you make her a less powerful person, you make her less the person you fell in love with every time you do things like that to her. And I, I hope and, and, and pray that you understand that, because you don't have the right to take somebody's esteem from them. You don't have the right to torture somebody with, with, with you know, I love you, I love you, I love you, but yeah. I'm a, oh, we have a baby. You know, when she's vulnerable, when she's feeling safe, you just knock her legs out of her. You can't go any lower than that, especially when, when you knock her legs out of her, she falls on top of those kids that you gave her. Let me say this, Ms. Hubum. You love him and you're going to stay with him. What I would recommend is you a little bit and make him prove it. Always let him see his kids. If you want to date him, that's fine. But before you open your heart to him again, he's got to prove over the long term he knows how to speak to you. He knows how to love you. He knows how to be frustrated around you. He knows how to put down the bottle when he's with you. He knows how to act if he picks up the bottle and still doesn't call you out your name. Do you understand what I'm saying Absolutely. to you? Absolutely. He has to prove it to you. He has to be uncertain of you so that he knows he has to fight to keep you. You with me on that Absolutely. one? Absolutely. Never another Tuesday, Mr. Weldon. Never. You with me? Because yes, every Tuesday, when you whittle away the mother, the kitties go too. Yes, ma'am. You're going to be strong. Going to be a strong black woman. <laughs> you know what I mean? Know Absolutely. how to stand the ground. Absolutely. All of that. Absolutely. This matter is adjourned. Are you willing to forgive him? In actuality, I don't know if I'm willing to forgive him. I have finally woken up and gotten that confidence within myself that Judge Toller said that I need. And um, I, have put, I have decided to put a distance between us and see what will happen. And Judge Lynn got through to you today, yes? Yes. Okay. If I could go back and change a lot of things I've done, I would. Tell me why you deserve another chance. Um, things have changed, I guess, for me. I've, I've realized the bad guy that I've been and, and the stuff that I've done and how I've hurt her. I just want to do what's right and make her, you know, give her the confidence and security that, that she deserves.